Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today is December 4th, 2022. Yes, a new year, new news, and we're back with the same old guy giving the news. So the news is uh, sponsored by Analog Spotlight, a group of photographic retailers and manufacturers who have joined together to use, support analog photographic media and help keep analog photography thriving worldwide. The brands are Camera Dactyl, Cosmo Photo, Chroma Cameras, Reveni Labs, Reality So Subtle, Intrepid Cameras, Pixar Later, Brooklyn Film Camera, Ondo Camera, Standard Cameras, 20th Century Cameras, Victoria Graphica, Analog Wonderland, Cinestill, Large Format Camera Store, Carmethita Film Lab, RH Design, RZ Mago, and Elvandi Cameras. So thanks once again for all the sponsors for keeping these news going on. Also thanks to the Patreons that support the show through uh, their you know patronage and so on, and people that also do uh, you know, PayPal donations also helps. I actually got a Christmas one that was, you know, a Merry Christmas donation. So thank you to the person that did that. But yeah, I'm very happy to be back. I'm sorry for the month or so hiatus. Um, there really wasn't much news to do. And uh, during the holidays, it's always complicated with family. But yes, uh, we're back. There are news. And uh, I'm very curious, or there is news. Uh, I'm very curious about... <sighs> How it goes this year very excited for 2022 for the film uh, industry so let's go straight into it um, duck after duck has once again released or is releasing another film scanner this is a 3d printed uh, scanner with a sensor for the film edge film border not exactly sure but it actually does 35 millimeter film and I think it can also do 120 film. And this one comes with a screen. So it has an interface with Raspberry Pi and you can choose, toggle down menus and so on. There's not much more than the picture I'm putting on the screen because he's still working on it and he wants to release it when it's 100% ready. But I did see it on my stories on Instagram, wrote him and he sent me a picture. Um, one thing to note is it will be open source, so it will be free for anybody that wants to make it themselves, but he also will be offering it for those who, like me, are not very handy at Arduino stuff and uh, 3D printing and so on. So very cool to see a bit more development on the 3D printed um, you know, holder, basically. Then the Voidlander 50mm F1 finally has a price of $1,800. It's in pre-order at a few places, Camera Quest, b and and so on. So if you're into the 50mm M mount lens that opens up to F1.0, uh, you can now get one for less than $2,000, which is pretty cheap. Uh, it's not as cheap as the Chinese versions of the Nocti looks, but it is pretty affordable. Uh, then we have LLL uh, with a 35 millimeter collapsible lens. And LLL is Light Lens Lab, uh, the lens manufacturer based in China that did the version 1 8 element copy of the Leica Sumicron. And now is coming out with something that has never been seen before, as far as I know a 35 millimeter collapsible f2 lens. Cool thing about this is that it actually will be coming an LTM mount with a native end mount adapter. So that is really cool because LTM is like a thread mount, M39, and that will mount on a bunch of cameras from Bessas to Canons to Nikon. Oh, Nikon, I don't think Nikon made an LTM. Maybe they did, I might be wrong. Um, I'm not an expert on that one. Then also on like a Barnax and so on. So this is very cool because nobody has really been releasing lenses for the LTM community. And I think those cameras are usually pretty affordable. You can even use it on a Zorky. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting to for sure. The lens still doesn't have a release date exactly or a price point, but it is interesting. And like I said, it has specs, for example, that it focuses down to 0 0.5 meters, even though it's rangefinder coupled only to one meter. So from one meter to 0 0.5, you're kind of guesstimating or using a digital camera, adapting the lens basically. So then we have a 3D, uh, 3D printed, uh, I usually don't talk a lot about cinematography here on the channel because it's more about film photography uh, stills. Uh, but I do like talking about things that kind of dip a bit on both worlds. And this one is one. It's a 3D printed video camera, but not a video as in digital video, but a film video camera. 
to understand each other. So someone has gone ahead and basically printed part by part a working um, film camera that shoots video or cinematography. I don't know how you even express this. Like video sounds digital. Um, with 3D printed parts and it shoots something like 35 millimeter film, but it's like a very long format, almost feels like uh, anamorphic look. But it's very, very cool. Uh, I'll leave the link to the 3D printing group on Facebook where he posted. He was asking for feedback, asking for people doing similar projects. So if you are interested in something like this, I highly recommend you check it out, contact the person and talk about it. But I think it's really cool that people are dabbling into making a um, film uh, camera with 3D printed parts. Then, um, news from Fuji, and not bad. Um, Fuji Film, at least in USA, has a new, and I'll air quote new, Fuji Film 200 speed uh, color negative film. So it's 35 millimeter film. It seems to be C200 maybe, but with a rebrand. And now it's just Fuji Color 200. Um, and it's interesting because it means that at least they're investing on making the packaging material, the new marketing material, the new everything. It actually even has a badge that says new on the website. And if it is made by Fuji, uh, it maybe breaks the rumor that they're just keep on cutting old film stock and actually maybe is still uh, new stock. And I can't confirm or deny anything because I don't really know. Fuji doesn't talk to anybody except for Fuji. And I think even inside Fuji, people don't talk to Fuji. So who knows? But it's cool news to see because C200 is very, very looked for. Here in Europe, there's like a 10,000 or more uh, backlog of orders. Uh, we, for sure, at the store actually never have enough. People buy it very fast. So maybe new film stock? Probably not. Just a rebrand of the C200. Then we have NONS, um, the Instax camera, Instax mini film uh, camera that shoots with uh, EF lenses and uh, M42 lenses. It's kind of a quirky camera. Is working on what they call the SL660 Instax Square coming, so camera. So what is this? It will be a camera that adapts, uh, I don't know exactly what lenses are going to be adapting, but they have produced their own speed booster or magnifier, I don't even know how to call it, basically creates full frame lenses into bigger format uh, circle. So it would make like a 50 mil Canon EF to basically cover Instax uh, Mini. I don't know what they're going to do with the square, they're going to go with medium format lenses, they're going to go with Mamiya Press lenses, which are also very looked for, or they're just going to do some other kind of like a speed booster style thing that will make the circle bigger uh, f to cover the Instax Square, but it's very cool. They make their own shutter, which is extremely interesting. Just like I said in the top news of 2021, like Mint, they basically developed their own shutter. So good news there. Then we have Simon Foss, uh, Foster with uh, the Reveni spot, mat, uh, spot meter lens caps or caps. So as you know, Reveni's made the spot meter, which is really, really small, but it's so small that you either have a carrying pouch or just kind of will, you know, jump into your bag and just be all around, um, which is not exactly good. So uh, Simon has made 3D printed caps for the front and the back. He's got them on his eBay store, which I'm gonna link below but he does make a bunch of caps, custom caps for all kinds of things, which is very cool. Plus Simon does very good work, I think on his 3D print, so should be cool. Uh, but if you have a Reveni spot meter and you're thinking what I'm thinking, hey, how do I protect the, the ends of this thing? This is an option. Um, then we have a 3D printed holder. As you know, people, like I mentioned before, are making 3D printed holders. This one is a manual but it is uh, open source, it's on Thingiverse, and it's basically held by magnets. It looks like Valoi on a diet, basically. 3D printed Valoi equivalent, uh, very similar roller system with little rubber uh, tips. So if you're into something, do it yourself, you can try this out. I haven't tested it out, can't assure it's good or bad, but just in case if you're into that, you can check it out. So yeah, that's been the news for today. Like I said, we're back. 2022, full of energy, full of uh, news, hopefully for the film community. I'm very excited for what's up to come. Uh, there are news that are coming that are good that I can't share yet. Hopefully we'll have uh, more developing throughout the year. But yeah, thanks for everybody that's watched and support uh, supported throughout the years. 
Um, yeah, very, very grateful to call this my job. Uh, putting on a tacky suit, plus I have a new pin from Gitzo and uh, an Ilford HP5 pin when I'm very excited for the new year. So yeah, thanks for watching. As always, remember, if you have any information, send an email to the email below. It really does help me uh, know about what's going on in the film world. If I'm busy and I don't realize, uh, as I brands don't seem to let me know about the news, so I have to keep on sourcing them. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.